got these maples. But oh, ho, ho. I swear, every time I, every time I come into here, I have to make like a ho, 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 noise. Yeah. Coming through nicely, a bit Cosmo. Oh, this is exciting actually. Two things. Got uh, cauliflowers potted on just to grow really big before putting out. And then we've got a, it's a the hardy kiwi um, called Jenny. We're going to grow up the side here, hopefully, as long as it grows. Now, this is a, a makeshift way of uh, growing on the tomatoes without needing more heat mats and everything. And so, under here, we have 163 tomato plants, which are looking really nice. Coming on well, but it's just to give them a bit of extra warmth. If it's going to get even colder, say if the weather says maybe one or two degrees at night, then this is something where we can put a blanket over it. But this is double insulated, and all of the tomato plants have put on a huge amount of growth since I last looked about two days ago. A cutting that Lucy just put in black currant. They, you can propagate them from cuttings, it's just a lot of them fail, but that one's working. Oh, and in memory of the polycrub, these are tomato seedlings that have self-sown on the polycrub that we've brought over here. Just to keep, because we're, clear, we're clearing the beds and so we wanted to make sure that they can live. Right, Japanese maples. This is so nice to see. I've been dreaming of Japanese maples for years and years and years. And so trying to make this whole space feel nice. Again, perennials. Now this is where I take an exception where I can't really eat anything from this. However, it's gonna look stunning and there's gonna be hops on the other side. But to put the beds in using this nice bit of larch cladding We've got three different types and so imagine the welcome for people coming in oh and the light of it as well with the sun behind all right secret garden time <laughs> there's not much i can show in the garden but i, I just couldn't wait anymore i had to show you this uh, our second hotbed that we've ever made Wow. <laughs> yeah, it is just radish. Radish central, wow. And then got some purple pak choy coming through. The nice thing about purple pak choy compared to green pak choy is that it seems to evade any kind of pest issues, for example, um, slugs or flea beetle. And I think it is something to do with the purple in the leaves, but Top tip, if you struggle with green pak choy, grow purple pak choy. These are peas we're growing uh, for pea shoots and so can start to harvest those as well for the salad. Uh, you got some spinach coming through as well. And on both sides, sown a nice mix of lettuce. And uh, this is actually a CD15 tray. Also really useful, a bit like the HR10, nice and narrow that you can use to propagate seedlings. Uh, this is basil so really really happy to see how this has come on so quickly i mean i'm we're gonna have to start weighing <laughs> isn't this amazing yeah. well funny enough this is called french breakfast oh, there you go. <laughs> it's a radish tasty radish but a radish so hotbed number three now. Carrots starting to come through, onions coming through, turnips are through, need a thin. Uh, it's gonna start off some squash seedlings in here. Currently reading about 42 degrees Celsius. Uh, again, no kind of horse manure or anything used in either of these. We've just made it out of uh, essentially seaweed, hay, grass clippings, used coffee grounds, easy. In these whiskey barrels, we've put in some patio plums so we've got one here, one here, and then another down there. So they're not going to grow too tall, but it's just 
again, if you saw the perennial video that I did, it's putting in perennials just to add more visual interest. And these are gonna look beautiful. Behind me here is a, on the theme of experiments from last week's video. This is all, all planted up with potatoes, around four or five different methods of potatoes, just essentially in topsoil with adding extra mulches and fertility uh, to see what happens. And on the theme of potatoes, uh, Lucy and Lear have each planted their own potato tower and the idea is you plant potatoes on different levels, they grow out and above and when it comes to harvesting you pull out the wire and it all kind of all collapses down so you can pick out the potatoes. I'm a little bit, you know, apprehensive if it's going to work. Um, I really hope it does because we're going to weigh the harvest, see how effective it is and it could be a great way for small spaces, essentially. You know, I've seen this on Instagram and Pinterest, but very often it's nice to actually see something happen in person to know whether I can recommend it or not. So this is, uh, this section here is dubbed the gin bar, or for me, the whiskey corner, you know, to the whiskey barrel here. Um, just a little bit of fun, uh, it, we're calling this the plotting bench. So we're going to get proper chairs for here, but the idea is that we can, this is just for show, but the idea we, we can sit down with a beer or something and plot all of the things that we're going to be doing in the garden. And you've probably noticed a lovely trellis behind, a uh, link in the description with where I got this trellis from. We've planted a hydrangea, it's a Anomala petriolaris. It's a climber, it's got an RHS award for garden merit, and it's probably pronounced not like how I said it. Uh, but this, this is going to span, it's a, it's a nice climber that spreads really wide, so we're going to span it on either side with beautiful white flowers. So it's going to be this amazing hydrangea corner, in a sense. And uh, yeah, and I've also planted a, just another, just through here, another magnolia. This one here is uh, Magnolia Susan. And so as this grows and starts to like kind of cover this area, we're just gonna create such a nice corner. And that's the thing about gardening is, I say it time and time again, you wanna create a space that just draws you to be there. So it, it, even if your, your primary focus, which is my primary focus of growing food, I still want as many reasons to, to be able to get to the garden, to just enjoy it, to sit down, to relax. Because a garden that has more people around is going to be kind of better maintained in a sense. And so that's why we've got the, uh, the gin bar. So we very, well, on Saturday we had a volunteer day, first one of spring. Uh, our next volunteer day, we're planting a, a David Austin Rose Garden. Um, so that's really fun. But one of the jobs that we did here is uh, put in some larch cladding. And you can tell we love larch. These posts were just in in terms of structure and support. Now, the, <laughs> we're thinking, oh, let's just, let's just cut them off there and then. But I thought, let's actually just keep the posts in for a few days because as we're walking past, you might think, oh, there actually might be something useful in having maybe one or two posts up. Nothing has come across my mind yet as to why we should keep these in. Um, so if you have any suggestions for what we could do, we could even just like take two out. So we've got four, can do something with them, maybe hang something, attach something. But the main thing is this back border in front of the original polytunnel to fill it with perennials uh, the kinds of perennials that are great for pollinators and pretty low maintenance. And I might, especially for this first year, in order to develop it, put in some things like borage. Borage is fantastic for bees and it, the nectar comes back really quickly um, with borage. And so it just keeps on helping the pollinators. And so, yeah, this is gonna, now this is ready, it is ready to be planted up and to really look beautiful. So on the theme of borage, we've kept this plant in that you can eat the beautiful flowers. That was a fail. <laughs> I missed it. You can eat the beautiful flowers. But we've been prepping these beds ready for tomatoes and cucumbers. 
but I've left this borage in for as long as possible until like very last minute, even when we plant around it, just because of how good it is for the bees and the bumblebees. <laughs> the nice thing about these raspberries actually is uh, these were put, these bigger ones were put in last year and essentially I want to create a raspberry hedgerow and all of these there's dozens of plants popping up. We've put in new ones as well this year but I just want this whole thing to be raspberries which are also an amazing plant for, for pollinators. So market garden area has changed quite a bit mainly because of a weeding blitz at volunteer day and then uh, Sam yesterday uh, nice little arch created. Let's see how long this one stands up for. Um, but again, it's just creating that blank canvas. There isn't that much soil depth in here. The, the, the approach instead is actually to build up the soil using essentially mulches. I'm not afraid from, of using things like grass clippings as a mulch, even though I know the, the potential of slug damage. We did a lot of grass clip mulching in both gardens last year and virtually no extra slug damage at all however every year can be different and that's the thing if then slug damage starts to happen we can just remove the mulch it's always good to just try something before just knocking it off can a man not eat in peace <laughs> never mm. so sometimes when i disappear for a day or two. Uh, my colleagues do something that just surprises me in a great way. This is one example. It's this lovely little stone border with, uh, with peas and field beans planted all along the bottom. A dwarf variety of peas, just so we can grow more. I love, I, I grow a unacceptable amount of peas. That's just something you have to understand about me. If you want to be a, you know, I have to tell my friends this. If you want to be my friend, you have to understand that I grow an unacceptable amount of peas. However, I do also grow strawberries. And so we've got this deep gutter here with the strawberries looking nice. But the thing that I, I love and I kind of really got the sense of coming back because we've had some nice weather recently is how everything is just starting to green up. It's starting to turn nice and luscious. Um, with the herb garden, we're going around, been propagating them. So with a lot of the mint, you can just go in with a, a trowel and you can dig it out, put it in a pot like this. This was done a few days ago, give it a good water, leave it for about three to four weeks just to settle. And then you've got, you know, a potted mint plant. It'll probably cost you four or five quid uh, for free that you could then either sell on or give away, etc. And this, uh, this is just such a simple way of increasing the, amount of, increasing the amount of yields that you get, not just in terms of food, but in terms of plants that you could then take to a plant swap because that's something to bear in mind. If you have a local permaculture group, gardening group, usually they, they have a plant swap around May time. Um, and so I can use a load of these, about six different mint varieties to take with me uh, to swap for things that I might not have any. Well, I'd like to introduce you to our table. The grand reveal. It's, a, it's an L-shaped table as well. It decided to get an upgrade. So <laughs> we've got a sink. Woo! This is it's so nice uh, compared to the white table that we had before. To now have this in, we've put some wood chip underneath just because it was a little bit uh, muddy. And then we decided to add another part of the table here, just so again, more space. And in, in, the, in a garden, you can spend a lot of time kind of like down like this, trying to reach over us. And so just having things at a little bit more at hip height, so you can just make sure that you stand up and stretch whenever possible. And uh, yeah, just a really useful thing to have. I'm, I'm starting to think, what, what could we do on this side of the trellis, for example, just to make this feel really nice. Um, but in terms of having a water station, extra storage, that's actually more permanent and looks nice, makes a world of a difference. Field beans going from strength to strength. And here is our 
Vunty leak patch. And so it's actually going to be, <laughs> they were planted quite deep. So that there is, there is a, a decent amount of leak here. This is going to be next week, the first thing that gets processed in Sam's test kitchen that we've set up. We've got a big chest freezer, and so we're gonna take up all of these leaks, uh, process them, potentially do some interesting ferments, but also just to freeze a batch. So we've just got leaks to be able to eat over the, the hungry gap. And, uh, and then the main, the main reason, the main motivation behind this is this, this part of the, of the bed here is, is prime real estate for growing things and you know May is just around the corner and so wherever possible if we can clear up space but still be able to enjoy the glut of the harvest we can then start thinking about putting more things in straight away. Oh, oh, you are such a big boy, come on, look, Figu, oh no, my direct plants! What are you doing Figu? Figu? Hello, how are you? See you, do you want a treat? Do you want to sit? Good boy. Ow, yum. Yum. Go on. As you know, I'm putting in a load of uh, perennials, especially soft fruit here. And I'm really excited to announce I've teamed up with Direct Plants to collaborate on a really good offering. It's a Hugh Richards soft fruit collection. So you get about 15 plants, white currants, black currant, jostaberry, gooseberry, honeyberry, raspberry, blackberry, red currants, all of those. And they come in two boxes, so you can find the link down below. They also have a discount subscriber club that you can just put in your email address, save some money there. And there's also a great discount on multi-buying as well. And so my, my initial vision was this, is to create a really nice plant collection that you can use to create your own mini, maybe like soft fruit food forest. And so if you really want to start expanding it, you can get essentially wholesale prices because something like a honeyberry like this alone, my local like plant nursery sells this for like 17 quid, which is ridiculous. And so if you're looking for a bargain and a lot of great food and flavors, check the link below.